Hi, my name is Noah Ingle, and I'm an eighth grader at Wydow Middle School in St. Louis, Missouri. Have you ever seen pond scum? That green stuff floating on the water? That's algae. It's found everywhere in oceans, rivers, lakes on soils, sidewalks and walls, on the fur of polar bears and sloths, in lichens that cover rocks and trees. It's even in the jet stream. Algae are important components of the food chain. They're in the products we use daily, and now they're a new source of green, renewable biofuel. Algae have been around for more than two billion years. Scientists believe that most of the oil and natural gas reserves on our planet originated from algae and other primitive organisms in Earth's ancient oceans. Oil as a fossil fuel consists of liquid hydrocarbons that likely formed from kerogen, a mixture of algae, plankton, biodegraded compounds, and plant material that make up part of the organic matter in sedimentary rocks, such as shales. Under conditions of high pressure and temperature in the Earth's crust, over millions of years this crude petroleum oil was released. Land plants are thought to have emerged from simple green algae. In ancient times, algae played an important role in the origins of the oxygen atmosphere that supports life on Earth today. Did you know that about 50% of the oxygen we breathe comes from ocean algae or phytoplankton? Algae come in many different colors, shapes, and sizes, ranging from simple one-celled microscopic organisms to colonies of cells and long hair-like filaments. Sea kelps are another type of algae. Algae can be green, blue-green, red, yellow, or brown because of their pigments. Most algae are green because they contain chlorophyll, just like regular plants. And like plants, green algae capture light energy from the sun, and through photosynthesis, they convert it into chemical energy to power themselves and make sugars. Scientists think there are about 30,000 species of algae. Scientists are excited about the possibility of using green unicellular microalgae as a renewable source of biofuel. In a world concerned by global warming and the need for non-polluting fuel, algae are looking pretty good. Algae can use large quantities of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, as a carbon source for photosynthesis and growth. Algae can grow in fresh water, salt water, or even in wastewater. They grow a lot faster than food crops like corn used to make bioethanol or soybean for biodiesel. Compared with current energy crops, algae can likely deliver up to 100 times more energy per acre of land. Certain microalgae naturally produce and accumulate oil that can be converted into biofuel. Scientists and engineers are looking at two main ways of cultivating algae on a large industrial scale to produce algae biofuel. In closed photobioreactor systems and in highly controlled open raceway ponds. Pilot studies are being conducted using both of these systems right now. Typically, algae needs sunlight, carbon dioxide, micronutrients, and water to grow. This is called phototropic growth. Different types of algae have different growth rates, and the intensity of light, photoperiod, temperature, water quality, nutrients, pH, aeration, and mixing are all important to growth. In addition to sugars and proteins, microalgae contain lipids and fatty acids as membrane components, storage products, metabolites, and sources of energy. The lipids and fatty acids that microalgae make vary. The type of algae, the growth conditions, and the age of the algal cultures 
can have a big effect on both the lipid content and the types of lipids made. Green algae, called chlorella, can make about 14 to 22 percent lipid, and under special conditions, this can be increased up to 40 or 50 percent. Another alga, called Batriococcus, is a great hydrocarbon producer. It can accumulate up to 90 percent lipid by weight, but it grows really slowly. Algal oils are similar to those of fish and vegetable oils. They can be collected and turned into biodiesel fuels for trucks, cars, and trains. Algae oil might even be processed into jet fuel someday. Diesel fuel and gasoline can be made from algae oil through a process called transesterification and by the catalytic cracking of the lipids that accumulate in the algal cells. In some cases, the amount of lipids can be significantly increased by depriving the algae of nitrogen. Lipids can also be increased in some algae by growing them in the dark and feeding them a carbon source like glucose. This is called heterotrophic growth. Here are single cell microalgae that were boosted with glucose. They're producing tiny droplets of lipids that appear bright green. Because of high oil prices, our depleting fossil oil reserves and our concerns about increased levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, algae have emerged as a promising future source for biofuel. Microalgae offer advantages in the production of renewable biofuel because algae can be grown and harvested fairly easily. The real challenge comes in extracting the algae oils and lipids. If this is done in a non-destructive way, the algae can keep growing. It's important to collect and examine many different algae strains to find those that are best for making algae biofuel. That's why we started a community science project in St. Louis, Missouri called Backyard Biofuels. This is a project shared by the Center for Advanced Biofuel Systems, or CABS, at the Danforth Plant Science Center and the St. Louis Science Center. It's funded in part by the U.S. Department of Energy and the National Science Foundation. We have spent the last year celebrating all things algae at the St. Louis Science Center with our Algae Palooza gatherings. It was fun to look at algae under the microscope, make algae balls, make our own biodiesel, and see an algae photobioreactor in action. Here's an overview of the project. The algae samples, after donated to the project, are cultured on both solid plates and in liquid culture. Then, they are grown under special conditions that promote lipid synthesis. The algae cells are stained with a dye called Nile Red that turns fluorescent when it binds to lipids inside the cells. This fluorescence can be measured to determine how much lipid is there. Then, the exact types of lipid are determined. This is how the algae are screened. Over a thousand algae collection kits have been distributed so far, and we have already gotten samples of algae back that can make very high levels of algae oil. The scientists at the Danforth Center are studying these further. If you are interested in helping out by collecting a sample of algae, go to our website for more information. Once you donate a sample, you can track the progress of your collected algae as it's being analyzed in the laboratory. Who knows? You might be the one who discovers the best green algae strain ever for producing algae biofuel in your own backyard. Microalgae biofuel is a non-toxic, non-polluting, renewable energy source that can help sustain our world. Next time you see algae growing, remember, think algae biofuel. I'm Noah Ingle, signing off at the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you.